Praise the Lord. Well, they say that it's only the ladies who get baby brain, uh, but as you can see this morning, I'm still catching up with things, of course, so uh, I see that as a bit of a myth, really, so, uh, but praise the Lord, amen. And so uh, let's have a look at this topic of, of leaving it all behind from 1 Kings uh, and this story of Elijah and Elisha. So I'm sure that you know, but the Bible, both in the Old and the New Testament, is littered with themes of transition in the lives of people and nations and situations and relationships. And so we often see, don't we, in the Bible, people being called from one place to another, being called from somewhere to somewhere else, or letting go of something to take up something else. The Bible prophets on several occasions speak of the Lord God doing a new thing. Jesus talks about his ministry as new wine, going from what was the old into the new of what Jesus has for us. We hear of old and new covenants, the old for the new, death to life, old life in exchange for new life. Amen? We can see that throughout the Bible. It is littered. And so on the screen, there's going to be a picture of a friend of mine. I want you to just take that image in. His name is Stuart. Uh, he's currently with us at Central Baptist Church. And this picture here is actually from uh, his prison ID card. So I don't know whether you know this, but when you go into prison, you're given an ID card. It's got your face on it. It's got all your details on it. And you have to carry it around with you. And nowadays, he keeps this in his wallet as a reminder of where he's come from and where he is now in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you're going to see him now on his wedding day about a year ago. And so can you see the difference, that transition from the old into the new? Because Stuart has chosen to give his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a, uh, if we go back to the previous picture, sorry, I'll just explain a little bit about why he looks the way that he does there. So he was a thief, he was a heroin addict, he was a crack addict, he was every addict under the sun addict, and uh, doing lots of wrong things in society, yet when he meets the Lord Jesus Christ in a Christian rehabilitation centre, he goes on to the next photo to look like this. He gets baptised, he meets someone, he gets married. This is all just about a year ago. And so praise the Lord for his particular transition. And may we pray that we see many more people transitioning in such ways. Amen. Doesn't have to be as dramatic of that, of course, because we've all got things that we need to leave behind and give up the old for the new. Amen. It could be anything, but this is obviously an extreme version. But as we know... Every time we transition from something to something else, it requires, doesn't it, for us to leave something behind. Every transition means that we're leaving something behind, just like we see in the story of the call of Elisha in today's reading. Amen? And so if we're looking for some context to why Elijah is passing on something to Elisha, this position as prophet of the Lord, we might look at 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 14. Rather than looking around the Bible, let's just look at verse 14. Good context of what is going on here. In a conversation with God, Elijah replies, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. So at this point, he is the prophet, the appointed prophet of the Lord's. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. And so we can get some context there, can't we? That the nation of Israel, the people of God, those who are supposed to represent him in this world, are in a bit of chaos. They're not in allegiance with the Lord. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. They haven't been listening to Elijah, the prophet of the Lord. And that is what Elijah was. He was a prophet. And the quickest understanding I can give you of that this morning is that he was a person who the Lord God spoke through to his people Israel at the time in a particular point in time. Elijah's name means my God is Jehovah and that is what we've just called our newborn son because I pray that his God would be Jehovah, amen, the one true living God of the Bible. And this name my God is Jehovah certainly shows up in Elijah's life and ministry. 
His life was marked by service and obedience to God, confidence in God, attentiveness and receptivity to God's voice and speaking out what he heard from the Lord God. He knew of God's provision and power and he performed miracles. His life was marked by prayer and wisdom and power. He spoke truth to power of his day. He had an awareness of the judgment of God and called God's people to repentance. He trusted, he had confidence, faith and strength in the Lord. And as it says in verse 14, he was zealous for the Lord God. And that whole front of that passage of 19, his mountaintop experience with the Lord, shows us that he knew and experienced the presence of God. Amen. His life was marked by all of those things. I wonder if we want our lives to be marked by the same kind of things. That wouldn't be too bad, would it, if we could say that our lives were marked by the same things as Elijah. But in verses 9 to 18, Elijah does have that mountaintop experience with God. He's in the presence of God. He's hearing from God. But importantly, in the context of what he's about to do in our reading today, he has received some instructions from the Lord God to anoint new leaders for God's people, one of which would be his successor as prophet to the Lord, who would be Elisha. And so we read, don't we, in verse 19, if you have your Bibles there in front of you, or it may come up on the screen. Verse 19, so Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12 pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. And so in this moment, Elisha is chosen by the Lord God to succeed Elijah as the Lord God's prophet. The cloak, which we might call the prophet's garment back in the day, it might seem a bit strange to us now, but that's how they identified themselves. This was Elijah's mantle. And when we think about mantle, it means that he had some sort of role or responsibility before God and for God. And so although the cloak had many purposes, it identifies Elijah in his role and his responsibility as the Lord God's prophet. And so in this moment where he meets Elisha in this field as he's working away, by placing the cloak onto Elisha, Elijah is in fact identifying him as his successor, his new disciple, his companion and his servant. Because Elisha had lots to learn from Elijah about how you can be a prophet to the Lord. And so Elisha was to learn Elijah's ways and one day take on the authority, the role, the responsibility that Elijah held as God's prophet. If you want some reading for homework, if you go to 2 Kings and chapter 2 and verse 11 to 14, we see the complete handover in all of its fullness from Elijah to Elisha as Elijah is taken up to heaven and he actually leaves the cloak behind so Elisha might be identified as the one true prophet of the Lord God. And so effectively, just as Jesus regularly invited people to come, follow me, we know that, don't we, that Jesus invites us to come and follow him. Just as Jesus says those words, effectively, this is what Elijah is doing with Elisha as he hands over this cloak. But here's the interesting thing, particularly for us uh, simple and ordinary people today, amen? Amen. Um, The interesting thing here is that Elisha was a seemingly simple and ordinary man, yet he had been chosen to be the prophet of the Lord. He had a pretty cool name, a pretty strong and powerful name, because his name meant God is salvation. And that would really be the outworking of his ministry, wouldn't it? But actually he was a seemingly simple and ordinary man. He was a farmer. He was a grafter as we might say in Leicester. Do we all know that word? We know what it means to be a grafter. It means that we work hard and faithfully at our jobs. Yet clearly he was a faithful man of God. Have a look at verse 18 just before this reading because it talks about a faithful remnant of the Israelite people. But there were just 7,000 people who are mentioned in chapter 18. But we imagine that because Elisha has been chosen, he is included in that faithful remnant. 
And so the Lord God calls and uses ordinary people, doesn't he? I would say that me and Stephen are particularly ordinary, would you say? There's nothing overly special about us. He says he's lifted the FA Cup, but um, there we go. Maybe that makes him special, I don't know. Um, But we all are, aren't we, in a way? We're all seemingly simple and ordinary people, yet it is people like us who the Lord God chooses to use to fulfill his extraordinary purposes and plans. Amen? All throughout the Bible, he chooses people who are seemingly simple and ordinary, but he makes them into kings and rulers of countries and people who can perform miracles and so on and so forth. We see this all the way through. And so one thing I want to say to you this morning before we get back into that main theme of leave it all behind is let us take confidence in the fact that God wants to use us as ordinary people. Amen. We can all have an impact for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we think about the transition for both Elijah and Elisha, we begin to see exactly what we explored at the beginning of this sermon today. In that the transition requires both of them to leave it all behind. Can we say that together? Leave it all behind. I wonder if we can see that as Elijah begins the process of leaving behind his role as prophet as he comes to call Elisha as his disciple and take him away for training. Elisha leaves behind everything that he knows. Everything that he knows. And we see it in the 12 yoke of oxen and the ploughing equipment, which might be a strange term to us today. I don't know if any of you have been involved in agriculture. I haven't. I think I'd find 12 yoke of oxen and ploughing equipment quite odd in in my experience. But we need to understand that they were representative and symbolic of Elisha's livelihood. So whatever it is that you do for a living or whatever it is that you did do for a living... Imagine taking that, that identifies your livelihood. It, the 12 yoke of ox and the ploughing equipment was his identity. It represented the present life that he was living. Amen? But he and his family likely had a large field. There's 12 yoke of oxen. They must have had a considerably sized field. And they were probably wealthy and lived very comfortably. Because they had the large field, they needed all of this equipment. Yet Elisha was willing to sacrifice it all for the sake of what the Lord God was calling him into. Amen? He was willing to sacrifice everything that he knew because the Lord God had something better in store for him. And serving the Lord trumps everything else that we have in our lives. So he's called into something else that the Lord God has for him in the future. And so here's what Elisha does. He says goodbye to the old. He makes peace with it to embrace the new. Can you see that in the passage today? He doesn't hold on to anything. He doesn't try and save anything in case he needs it later. He is all in to the call of God upon his life. He sacrifices everything. Have a look at the passage. He goes back. He burns the wood to make the fire and he sacrifices the animals to feed his family. He has got no farming equipment left. No livelihood because he's confident that he has been called into what God has for him. And as he transitions from this farmer to being the prophet for the Lord God, he is used in a mighty way. If we read on in the Bible, we see that he becomes an instrument of judgment upon Israel. He has some harsh words to say to God's people at the time. But often, just like the church today, it is necessary, isn't it, to call people back to and remind people where we need to be in the Lord Jesus Christ and what the church needs to be doing in this present age. Elisha was an instrument of judgment upon Israel. However... (laughs) He became famous for performing miracles, amen? Because he had the power and the call of God upon his life. He was able to perform miracles. He became famous for it. God used him, this farmer, into this prophet who performed miracles. And so like Elisha, we will never fully know what the Lord God wants to do with us, personally or collectively as his church, 
unless we are willing to leave it all behind. But that's not easy, is it? How many of you can think of something right now that if the Lord God challenged you to leave that behind for the sake of something better that he has for you, that you might find it difficult to leave behind? I think we can all think of something, amen? So we acknowledge that this is not easy. And when we look at the ministry of Jesus, we see that people often walked away from Jesus, amen? When Jesus called them to him and to something more that God has for them, they walked away from him because they found his teaching a little bit too difficult. In particular in Matthew 19, the rich young ruler who asked Jesus about how he can get eternal life, the scripture tells us that he walked away sad because he was a very wealthy man and Jesus had asked him to give up all of his wealth and give it to the poor. We can think of these examples in our own life, can't we? This is difficult stuff, but this is the call of God upon our lives. And when we leave something behind that he calls us to leave behind, he is faithful and gracious to give us what he's promised and that he has in store for us. It will work out for us if we do these things. And so I wonder this morning, what do you personally, or what do you hear as a church at Goodwood Evangelical, need to leave behind to enable you to walk fully in the purposes and plans that the Lord God has for you. I wonder what that might be for you personally today. I wonder what that might be for this church today in this place. Let me give you a few things to think about. Maybe it's that you need to leave behind the past in one sense. We have fond memories of the past, don't we, most of the time. I remember back to the 90s, growing up as a child, it was fantastic. The 90s, by the way, is the best era that anybody could have ever lived in. But sometimes we can cling too much to the past, amen? And it can hinder what we're trying to do in the present. And so maybe it's the past. We like that term, don't we, of the good old days. Are we, you know, the good old days? Do you remember the good old days when it used to be like this and it used to be like that? Well, we're not there anymore. We're here in the present day, amen? God has done things then with you. He wants to do new things with you now. In Ecclesiastes verse seven, seven, uh, chapter 7 and verse 10, sorry, it says, Do not say, why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. In other words, don't focus on what has been, but focus on the present and where God wants to take you as a follower of Christ and as a church here at Goodwood. Maybe you're here today and you're not yet a follower of Christ. Well, he is calling you to follow him. The invitation is open to every person. Maybe that is something for you to leave behind and to follow him this morning. Perhaps it's a way of doing something. We can become set in our ways, amen? We can all uh, openly admit that, I'm sure. Perhaps it's a grievance that you've got with somebody that's holding you back from the purposes and plans that God has for you. Maybe it's a relationship. When I came to faith, I came out of a life of violence and my friendship group uh, wasn't the best of people to hang around with when you now know Jesus. Uh, very influential in my life over time. And so I decided to make a clean break from those people and that life. Sometimes we have to do these things to fully know the purposes and plans that God has for you. Perhaps it's a job. Perhaps it's a position. Perhaps it's an addiction or a sin that you're entrenched in that you don't know how to get out of. And you're repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. Well, there's grace in the Lord Jesus Christ for you this morning. Maybe it's your home or even a country that God is calling you to or from or something like that. He often does these things, doesn't he? Maybe it's a way of thinking in your life or in this church that you need to leave behind to fully walk into the purposes and plans that the Lord God has for you. Or perhaps like Elijah, it is a position, a role, or a responsibility within the church here, or even somewhere else. You know, we have to have the wisdom, discernment, and humility to pass the baton on where necessary. Amen? Let us not overstay our welcome, as they say. 
if God is calling us to somewhere else, to do something else, to be something else. He will give you the grace to do it, amen? And so let us rely on that. And so just coming to the end now. So whilst we appreciate, don't we, and we're thankful for the examples of what we see in the life of Elijah and Elisha this morning in this passage about leaving it all behind, our ultimate example of that is, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, amen? We don't get a better example of somebody leaving it all behind to outwork the purposes and plans of God than we do with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Let us read these couple of verses together from the screen. So John 6 and 38, let us read together. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Philippians 2 and verses 6 to 8, let us read together. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death. Even death on a cross. There's more verses that we could draw on, isn't there, about what the Lord Jesus Christ left behind and what he gave up. John 6.38, he came down from heaven. He left heaven to come to the mess of earth to sort it all out effectively, to steal with the mess, amen? As we have rebelled against the Lord God as humanity, as we have rejected his ways, and we can see that in society today, how his ways are rejected and the consequences of that. The Lord Jesus Christ left his place in heaven to come and sort out that mess. Amen? The way that he does it, as it tells us in Philippians 2, 6-8, is that what he left behind is the fact that he gave up his very life So that you could take up new life in Christ, in him with God. Amen? There is no greater example than the Lord Jesus Christ who left it all behind and gave things up to walk fully in the purposes and plans of God. And so just as we draw to a close, I want to offer you maybe 30 seconds to a minute just to perhaps bow your heads and just begin to reflect on what's been said this morning. And what I want to encourage you to do in the next 30 seconds to a minute is just to identify something in your life or in the life of this church, in your opinion, because that would all need discussion with the leadership, amen, that you feel that you need to leave behind. Maybe it's something that the Lord God has been prompting you about for some time now and you've kind of said, no, not yet, no, not yet, no, not yet. Well, perhaps the day... Today is the day that you leave it all behind. And you make a concerted decision, an effort to leave it all behind. And we seek in prayer together this morning his empowerment, enabling and equipping to help you to do that by his grace. Amen. And so just begin to think of something. Identify something that you need to leave behind or something in the life of this church. And then I'm going to pray and and Stephen's going to come and introduce the, the final song. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you that as you spoke to Elijah and called him to leave behind his position as the prophet of the Lord, that he had the humility and the obedience, Lord God, to go to Elijah to pass on that baton of leadership and and prophecy, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that Elisha had the humility and the obedience, Lord God, to leave behind his life as a farmer and a grafter, Lord God, everything that he knew, his whole livelihood, to take up the call of God that was upon his life. Lord, we thank you in particular for our greatest example that is the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who left his very place in heaven and as we're about to remember in this Christmas period to become like us in our humanity, yet fully God. Lord Jesus, you gave it up. You left it behind. And in your humanity, you gave up your very life. You were nailed to a cross for our sake that we might, through the cross, come to the Lord God for a new relationship with him, reconciliation and new life. And so, Lord, we hold you as our greatest example this morning, Jesus. And as we come before you now, we each present those things that we have thought about this morning, about what we need to leave behind, Lord God. Many examples have been given in this sermon, but Lord, there is more that I guess you are resonating with people at this time. And so, Lord, I ask right now for every person that by your grace, by everything that you have done in Christ, that you would enable, equip, empower, and encourage every single person here to leave behind that very thing that has been identified this morning. And so, Lord, for the attitudes that need to be left behind, we say, be gone in the name of Jesus. For old life and coming into life with Christ, we say old life be gone and new life come. For everything, Lord, may that be left behind and Lord, may you begin to reveal right here and right now the new thing that you have for the people of this place today. For we ask of all of these things, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I think.